Hello everyone, let me start this video by asking you a question. What is one of the main functions of cryptocurrency? Well, I'm sure you'll answer here that one of the main functions is for cryptocurrencies to act as a medium of exchange. For example, either you use Bitcoin to say purchase coffee in the real world or you use Ether to perform a transaction on the Ethereum blockchain. However, in the last 24 hours, if you see, the price of Bitcoin has changed by 1.48%, Ethereum's price has changed by minus 1.72% and Matic's price has changed by negative 5.07%. So for something that is this volatile, it becomes almost impossible that the masses will use these cryptocurrencies to carry out transactions on a daily basis. And this is where stable coins come in. Almost every day, more than $2 billion worth of USDC, which is a stable coin, is exchanged or transacted on the Ethereum blockchain. So stable coins are already big and they're going to become bigger in the future. Hence, as investors and crypto enthusiasts, we should know what stable coins are. Hi guys, welcome to Pillow's YouTube channel. Pillow is a mobile first crypto app that gives you 18% interest on your crypto holdings. In this video, we'll understand what stable coins are, what is the need for stable coins and what are the different use cases of stable coins. Then we'll understand what are the different types of stable coins that are there in the market today. And then in the end, we'll talk about what the future of stable coins look like. And as investors, should we hold stable coins in our portfolio? So let's get started. Stable coins are a type of cryptocurrencies whose value is pegged to a real world and stable asset like gold or any other fiat currency. The main purpose of stable coins, like we discussed before, is to combat the volatility of other cryptocurrencies. With that, let's look at the specific use cases of stable coins. The first one is medium of exchange. Now there are thousands of cryptocurrencies available in the market and it is very difficult to find pairs for all of them to exchange. So for example, if you have Polygon Matic in your wallet and you want to buy Polkadot a token, you will find it very difficult to find this pair on any of the exchanges. And this is where stable coins come into the picture. Now, because the value of stable coins is not very volatile and they are widely available, you will find a lot of the cryptocurrencies having a pair with these stable coins. So now you can essentially go uh, and exchange your Polygon Matic for a stable coin and then convert your stable coin into Polkadot token. And because the value of stable coins is stable, there will be not be any major change in the value of the asset after you've done your transaction. The next use case is to send or receive money. For international transactions, stable coins are faster and cheaper than transactions done through bank or centralized financial institutions. These organizations charge a hefty fees and take a couple of days to complete a transaction. Using stable coins, money can be sent within minutes to any part of the world with minimal fees on certain blockchains. And the third use case of stable coins is that it is widely used for trading. We'll talk about this aspect in the future videos. But for now, I'm sure you must be wondering that how exactly is the value of stable coin pegged to some asset? Who is issuing these stable coins and ensuring that the value of stable coins does not fluctuate? How do we trust these coins? Well, for that, let's understand the different type of stable coins and how they function. The first type is fiat collateralized stable coins. These stable coins are the most popular. They are backed by a fiat currency, for example, US dollar or euro. Now, these stable coins are usually pegged in a one to one ratio. So meaning for a US dollar pegged stable coin, there will be one US dollar in the bank account of the issuer of this stable coin. Now, these stable coins, like other cryptocurrencies, are issued on a blockchain and their functioning like transfers or storage of data happens in a similar fashion to other cryptocurrencies. But the difference between other cryptocurrencies and fiat collateralized stable coins is that they are issued by a central authority and their price is not determined by supply or demand, but it is pegged to a fiat currency. USDC and USDT are two such stable coins. Both their values are pegged to the US dollar and their issuers have cash and cash equivalent like treasury bills or dollars in their reserve. 
USDT is the most popular stablecoin with a market cap of 78 billion and is issued and controlled by Bitfinex and Tether Limited. Then USDC, which has a market cap of 32 billion, is issued by Coinbase, which is again a crypto exchange along with Circle, which is a global financial technology company. However, because they are issued by central authorities, there are certain limitations. For example, the issuers of USDC are registered in the US and hence come under the jurisdiction and can be controlled. And because of this limitation and trust factor, the need for stable coins which are run by decentralized organization came into picture. We'll talk about two such tokens in the coming video, but for now, let's move on to the next type of stable coin. The second type of stable coins are crypto backed stable coins. As the name suggests, these stable coins are mainly backed by other cryptocurrencies. One such stable coin is DAI. Now, DAI is actually controlled and operated by a decentralized organization called MakerDAO. How these decentralized organizations function is a topic for another video, but in brief, if I have to explain, to be a part of MakerDAO, one needs to have its tokens called MKR tokens. These are easily available on crypto exchanges. Now, everyone holding MKR tokens take part in the decision making of MakerDAO. There is no one central authority or boss in MakerDAO. Operations and rules are coded on smart contract and decisions are passed by voting of all token holders, making it truly decentralized. Now, for every DAI that is minted and issued, there are cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, Bitcoin, Compound as collateral with MakerDAO. And these collateral that are kept as reserves are rigorously audited. But then you'll ask me, Anushka, this Bitcoin, Ethereum and Compound, which is kept as reserves for DAI, are themselves so volatile. Then how is the value of DAI stable and always equal to $1? Well, this is because for every DAI, there is more than $1 worth of cryptocurrencies that is kept as reserve. Hence here, even if the value of these cryptocurrencies fluctuate, the uh, DAI is always stable. DAI has a market cap of $9.6 billion, but because of this over collateralization, it has scalability issues. And that is the reason why USD or Terra was introduced. Now let's discuss the third type of stablecoins, which is algorithmic stablecoins. Now, unlike USDC, USDT and DAI, which are built on Ethereum blockchain, USD is actually built on Terra blockchain and it is backed by an algorithm. To understand how USD works and algorithmic backing works, we'll first have to understand a little bit more about Terra blockchain. So Terra blockchain is developed by Terraform Labs and just like Ethereum blockchain has a token called Ether, the token of Terra blockchain is Luna. Now apart from USD, there are a lot of other decentralized app on Terra, for example, Anger for saving, Mirror for investing and Chai for payments. And because of these decentralized app, the utility and use cases of Terra blockchain has increased and hence the demand and value of Luna, which is Terra blockchain's token has also increased. And that we can easily see in this chart here. Now, coming back to USD, as we've already discussed, USD is actually built on Terra blockchain. And for every new USD that is issued, $1 worth of Luna is burned. Remember Luna, it is actually the token of Terra blockchain. So with every USD issued, $1 worth of Luna in circulation decreases. And this is all done algorithmically and is completely decentralized. Now as more and more USD are issued, more and more Luna is burned and the value of existing Luna hence increases. This gives balance and stability to USD. I won't go into more technical details here, but Terra solves the problem of scalability, has cheaper and faster transaction. And this is why USD has already surpassed DAI in terms of market share. With that, we've discussed the three different type of stable coins that exist today. Over the last few months, the supply of stable coins has increased exponentially. There's a strong expectation that stable coins will pave the way for cryptocurrencies to become mainstream. Moreover, with a huge unbanked and underbanked population globally and people and businesses looking for faster, easier and cheaper way of sending payments across borders, stablecoins have huge potential for growth. 
Also, most of the stable coins today are pegged to dollar. Recently, Tether launched Euro Tether, which is pegged to the value of Euro. And we will surely see other currencies like INR, Pound, Yen pegged stable coins very soon. These coins will be a representation of these currencies in the digital world, making all the transactions and data in public and also assisting in the usage of apps on Web3. But then comes the question that as an investor, should I have stable coins in my portfolio? Well, if you're going to buy stable coins and hold them for the long run, that really doesn't make sense because the value of stable coins is actually pegged to the value of an underlying asset. But remember in the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that stable coins are widely used in trading. Well, I was referring to yield farming them. With stable coins, you can actually earn great returns with yield farming. If you want to know what yield farming is, then let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video on that. But till then, that is it for this video. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye.